Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales of the Space. Space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. The attempted assassination of a human dignitary at a galactic summit goes awry. Turns out, many conventional toxins in an alien assassin's repertoire includes compounds like caffeine, theobromine, and capsaicin. Lethal to many species, but less than effective on humans. Written by that 2000 night weird emo kid, who is currently selling a book and the link is in the description if you so choose to follow it. A deafening silence enveloped the conference room as soon as I stepped through the door. My two assistants rose behind me in terror, but I carried on like nothing was wrong, forcing them to follow in my lead. Even the species that were telepathic fell quiet as I walked past them, immediately noticeable by their stiffening antenna and their wide-eyed stares. It seemed my would-be assassins had already gossiped about their victory. Most of these diplomats had written off humanity as an upstart race. We accomplished warp travel only fifty years prior, a blink of an eye for some of these cultures, and quickly developed close diplomatic relations with some of the bigger players in the galactic stage, to the point where humans were mostly free to roam any corner of the Milky Way without risking war. The fact that we stuck to our corner of the galaxy despite being capable of expanding, had left some of these people skeptical of our motives. I didn't blame them, really. History had shown that spacefaring cultures rarely played nice with each other. It would be incredibly easy for humans to dismantle entire empires with sleeper agents due to how widespread we were becoming. How scientists, artists, and bounty hunters gained notoriety through honest use of their skills which meant several star systems already relied on us to function smoothly. Unfortunately, some people couldn't believe a species was that content with mere exploration, not without being secretly evil. These aliens were too used to their own technological advancements to see it from our perspective. Now that human aging had been mitigated and food was no longer scarce, most of us just wanted to do our own thing and hopefully learn something valuable along the way. There was plenty of room for everyone in the galaxy. That was our biggest epiphany when we first left our solar system. Furthermore, the whole universe waited for us beyond the galactic rim. Squabbling over territory just felt silly after getting the spa. I knew most people wouldn't buy that, though. Some of our allies were even starting to doubt our intentions. My job at the summit was to make sure that our current treaties held true. Anything else would be a bonus. Everyone expected me to sit next to the Trostyang, one of the humanity's first friends. That may have been adequate in a normal scenario, but not after an assassination attempt. Looking for sympathy from our allies would make us seem weak, almost like we needed an older species to protect us. That wasn't the message I wanted to send. In order to maintain our standing, proactive measures had to be taken, which is why I chose to sit between the Bullies and the Cowards, the two groups that had just tried to kill me. Ambassador Clark, gurgled the Bully representative, twitching her tentacles. How are you feeling? Great, I smiled, making myself comfortable. Something wrong? Uh, you, you look nervous. Do I? The Bully shifted in her seat. The retinue around her hadn't moved an inch since I sat down. Maybe it looks that way to a human, but I couldn't be more calm. Of course, sir. Sorry for assuming. I could have sworn you looked like a lot more relaxed during our meal. But I guess that's just my silly monkey brain acting up. We have a lot to learn from each other, don't we? Yes, muttered the bully. Your biology astounds me. I'm sure it does. If you're ever up for another dinner, just let me know. Your delicacies were scrumptious, especially that drink you gave me. I... I can't take credit for all of that. Uli glanced at the Kuwards ambassador. Our friend here promised to bring the best ingredients that he could find. The Kuwad replied in gelatinous body with an uncomfortable noise, making him as small as possible. I... I tried my best. 
Nobody said otherwise, I said. Say, where did you find those beans? I haven't found good ones in years. Um, the good struggled to answer. Well, yes, the bully, hoping to change the subject. Y you mean you tried it before? Of course, we call it coffee where I'm from. Humans often fraternize over a cup of it, especially after a meal. Don't your people do it too? The two ambassadors stayed quiet, sharing a quick glance. Uh, wait a minute. I scratched my chin. You mean to tell me that isn't the case? No. The coward, sweating droplets of purple ooze. We, we, we definitely use it a lot. But it is really expensive, added the bully, blaring at her ally. I found it is not worth the cost. As a coffee junkie, I have to disagree. We have it available on our replicators, but nothing beats the taste of freshly ground, organically grown beans. Right, said the coward. Now people have selectively bred the plants for centuries. We've found many applications for it. Fascinating. I'd love to see your fobs. Perhaps we could share notes. Heck, there's a lot of demand for it in our world, if you're interested in discussing a trade deal. The booly frowned. The Th that won't be possible, said the coward, intimidated. He actually looked tempted for a second. We're, we're very secretive when it comes to our growing operations. Uh, sorry. What a shame. Yes, the bully said. A shame. I'm surprised you love it that much. I uh, can't handle it. I can see how that might be the case. Some humans aren't very good at tolerating it, but most find the buzz it is usually worth it. Then again, that's our lot in life. We embrace discomfort to get what we want. Some species value the opposite, so I suppose it would be easy to never try anything difficult, when they don't have to. Now that I think about it, the same applies to our friendships. I started laughing. <laughs> we often tolerate the most crap from those we love. I gave them both a dead-eyed stare. Otherwise... Why, but up with it. The coward ambassador shrieked and rolled away in a ball, grabbing the attention of everyone else in the conference room. The booly tensed up, unable to speak. She seemed like she wanted to do the same as her ally, but couldn't afford to look weak in front of this many people. I didn't have to say anything else. My threat had been clear. The rest of the summit went smoothly from then on. Our allies saw that humanity wouldn't back down from a challenge but that we also wouldn't be savages about it. That earned us a lot more respect going forward. As I was leaving the conference room, one of my assistants went on to ask me why I dealt with them so kindly. If we had reported them instead, they would have been in clear violation of several treaties. Something that would have crippled them with sanctions and tariffs. I shrugged off their concern, saying, Sure, we could have messed with them uh, even more. But something tells me they wouldn't have learned their lesson otherwise. Remember, cooperation and endurance got humanity this far. Show them that the rising tide lifts all boats, and they'll discover it can drown them if they don't get on board. Besides, I chuckled, I am pretty grateful. Do you know how hard it is to find good coffee around here? End of story. Story number two, Pointy Sticks, written by British Tea Company. Upon our planet, there was a special thing that had always ensured no invader could ever prevail. At the center of our greatest world laid nature's greatest defiance to the evils of technology, the great tree of life, where all things living would be blessed by its presence. The tree, as holy and as sacred as it was, was not what outsiders perceived as valuable. Nay, as typical of the greedy imperialists that exist within the universe, they were always here for the rocks in our Earth. Rocks, shiny metals which they used to build the mechanical monstrosities or fuel their appetite to avarice. For countless ages, invaders had tried and failed. Countless have tried to land their armies on our planet, only to have their computers and machines fail them as the tree rejected all things inorganic. Their ships crashed and fell onto our planet, where lava flow would inevitably wash away metal, and where earthquakes would swallow 
the inorganic. Many have tried to destroy the tree from afar, using their weapons which would rain fire from the sky. Never to be marred by technology's filthy claws, the tree made weapons fail and shells explode harmlessly. Run told eons, this was how it had been. This is how it would be. Even the most tenacious of all warlords soon abandoned efforts to conquer our world. Never would we fall to the machines that descend from the sky. Always, we would to live our lives in close harmony with nature's wonders and boons. Eventually, the Terrans came. Though we seldom communicated with those infected with technology drug, we had known their reputation. Fearsome conquerors from the Milky Way galaxy, reputed to have butchered gods and extinguished stars. Like the rest of those who came to our world, they would meet much obstacles. Their invasion fleets bowed to their deaths as the tree denied their entrance. Their bombardments had no effects, as the tree would never allow machines to corrupt our world. The Terran generals fumed. The Terran lords raged. The Terrans themselves even humbled by our ability. But if the legends of Terran creativity and determination were ever to be vindicated, it would be the day when thou planet fell. Though we were unable to observe the works of the Terrans, we finally knew one day about this silence. From the depths of space, the corpse of a space whale fell from the sky. The space whales were massive creatures, sometimes miles in size. They wandered the astral oceans and swam the cosmic waves. Their blubber was capable of surviving off most baleful and mechanical weapons, let alone simply entry into another planet. With means still unknown to us, the Terrans had acquired the corpse of a space whale, unmarred by wounds, and sent it drifting into our world. But the corpse hit our planet. Millions of invaders poured out, the thick skin of the whale having shielded them from the impact. Draped only in furs and armed with nothing more than sharpened sticks, the Terrans came to our planet. Massive, imposing, and remorseless savages in their conquest— there was little resistance that was mounted. The great tree of life, the guardian which had shielded us from the horrors of these corrupted by the unnatural world, served as a bonfire over the corpse of millions of my people. The invasion fleet followed. The Terrans unleashed the full might of their military upon our planet. In less than a year, our people were no more. The following year... The Terrans had culled any species they had deemed unworthy. Our planet was desecrated, slowly transformed into a facsimile of every other Terran colony. It is here that I speak to you about the Terrans. Their history had them spearing megafauna to death. They're not the fools who remained dependent on air conditioning of fancy spaceships for society. They're as physically apt and wily as ever, and that is what makes them so unquestionably dangerous. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video, so click it click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I would just like to give a quick thanks to the T5 channel members and patrons. Alithia, Parky, Feudic Yol, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Angry Marine, Lord Azrakal, and White Van 420